Orb presents Victor Echo November. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Rutz. And I'm Autumn Greer. And this is Orb. Welcome. It's a dream date. It, it is. It is uh, uh, the 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 double double quadruple sextuple date <laughs> of the uh, of the century on the Venture Brothers. And yeah. as you heard, we are joined by a guest, Autumn Greer. Thank you for Friend joining us, Autumn. Well, Friend I, as always, I'm delighted to 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 be here to yeah. talk about one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah really appreciate you uh, joining us. Can you? Um, Say a little bit about uh, your relationship to the show and specifically why you chose, why this is one of your favorite episodes. Well, with the the Venture Brothers, I guess I'm a longtime viewer, first time podcaster uh, <laughs> okay. about, about the show. Um, we've been watching it pretty much since it first came out. Uh, and then, you know, obviously there's the big breaks in between and everything. And I tell you, on this episode, I just have such a soft spot for any time Dean is trying to have a traditional coming of age experience. <laughs> mm. I just feel like, I, I don't know, because I was an only child and, um, I, I, you know, you see like the way that everything is on TV and that you think that that's how the world's supposed to work. And <laughs> Dean's naive innocence just reminds me of me like, oh, a boy talked to me. I wonder <laughs> if we'll get married. You, you know, like, yeah. it's, just, it's just so earnest. And um, oh, bless him! Oh, Dean! What a Dean episode! Uh, very good Damn. Dean episode. Even yeah, what, what just, a Dean! Stop saying dab. Uh, <laughs> no, but just the, the the fact that it establishes a with him shaving wrong, like going right down from the forehead, but also him pulling the uh, the Jovan Musk from the place of uh, from the place of honor in his uh, mm -hmm. in his room. Yeah. <laughs> very well observed and the idea that you had to put that on your ding dong <laughs> got you dab it. yeah you got dab which is not uh actually my understanding i mean i'm you know i'm 40 maybe i've just I'm not I'm not as learned in the ways of love as i thought but i didn't know that a specific kind of dick cologne was desirable in any way i just felt like cleanliness was was the best fragrance when it comes to, to man junk but maybe i'm wrong. I, I I mean, I think that that was probably most of the articles in FHM magazine is the picking the right cologne. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, Our yeah. number one pick, Axe Body Spray. Number two. <laughs> yeah. no. Number two, not applicable. Yeah. 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 Number two, C number one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, th this is this is a real standout. This was uh, this has one of my Hall of Fame sequences mm -hmm. uh, and Hall of Fame lines. Uh, in the show, um, with, with specifically after the, the aftermath of the dab situation, <laughs> um, the, uh, you know, when I, when I'd have, when I'd show people this show to try to get them into it, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, no, no, that's how we got into this mess in the first place, <laughs> I think is such a well-deserved delivered line and such a funny scenario, <laughs> you know, like I, that I, I just, that was what I was, was showing people. Um, and also important episode because first appearance of Jolly Rancher 82, fuck you, Will. Uh, I do care about the first appearances. <laughs> you can go to hell. She doesn't appear um, again, though, does she? Nope. Okay, It cool. is her first appearance. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's technically I was, correct. Uh, I, I actually made Jeremy pause it when we saw when that line when... Um, uh, Dr. Mrs. The Monarch says, you know, how old is she? I'm like, I know exactly how old she is. She's 24. Yeah. yeah. She's of age. Yeah. Pretty young for the old monarch. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, but she's, he's um, dressed in a butterfly costume. Who do you expect to, find, to go after him? <laughs> all, all of that stuff is really good. There, there's mm -hmm. lots of like really great stuff with that. And then good lore as well. Yeah, um, I love the uh, multiple choice phantom limb uh, origin <laughs> scenario. Like I'm, I'm a sucker for when that happens. You know, <laughs> one just of, like one what, of them is just real genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, one of them probably happened, and the other ones are just done by idiots. Uh huh. Like, and just they're just you know absolutely wild, and like you kind of get little clues, like oh, mm -hmm. Billy was there, uh -huh. you know, because every that part of the story is the same. But 
yeah, yeah. it's absolutely a good shot good <laughs> shit. You know, the part that's missing though because they say that the good art leaves you wanting more i want to see that honda accord with the ghost on the hood I and they do. Let me we, we get to see the old monarch mo- mobile at some point mm-hmm. you know but we never see the old <laughs> Uh, Phantom Loom Mobile, low rent Phantom Loom would be great. Yeah, this ramen those lean dates. Yeah. I could have, I could have used a post credit scene where you know he ran over Billy's hand or something. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. I also would have enjoyed. Yeah, uh, I just, um, I, I, I love this because I, a, I love good Brock content and the fact that he stays, spends the entire episode naked and covered in blood is very good. Uh, but also, mm-hmm. anytime characters in this world have collisions with the outside world. You know, the fact mm-hmm. that Jolly Rancher 82 shows up and then just storms away in disgust halfway through without without comment. Uh, yeah. you, or, you know, just the way that Kim uh, uh, interacts with all of this. I, I, I love that as a character dynamic. Well, there's a real like one of the things I think that we're kind of zeroing in on through the show is that there's a gradient of how uh, aware characters are in the show that they're in this world and how much they're into it. Yes. You know, like, and you, you, like you could do one of those, um, you know, authoritarian left, <laughs> authoritarian, right? Like you could do one of those cross, uh, grids mm-hmm. with like doc is being incredibly aware, aware and incredibly not into it. Mm-hmm. And then like Dean as low, you know, medium aware, pretty highly into it. Yeah. Et cetera. And then you just have people walk in from off the graph, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's always really fun. Yeah. They'll yeah. continue to do that for the, throughout the whole show. I really love it. Like it feels like the kind of joke you couldn't keep doing, but yeah, you get Hank and the Monarch being maximum aware, maximum aware and maximum into it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> just like adore it, you know. Um, I would put Brock there too. Yeah, like Brock is way into the shit, even though he's cooler and better at it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just interesting to think about. Um, the uh, and then it's really like I really love that uh, she comes in through uh, Triana. Mm-hmm. You know, that Kim comes in through Triana because Triana was kind of our character who was, un, you know, our, our point of view outside looking in character yeah. prior to this. So her having friends there entirely you know, outside <laughs> of the world. Yeah. yeah. Very good shit. I, I um, gotta tell you, Kim, Kim's cyber goth vibe really holds up. Yeah. She's a she fan favorite. Yep. Uh, Kim. <laughs> much, much you to know? Jackson Public and Doc Amber's chagrin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and accident, you know, and down to like Doc Hammer being like, yeah, I made her sexy on accident. Uh, you know, I, I draw women in their underwear for a living and I accidentally made a sexy teen and everyone latched on to sexy teen. Yeah. Um, the whole internet loves sexy teen. Uh, so th- this is a Doc Hammer uh, episode. And mm-hmm. again, that feels very obvious. Yes. Uh, you know, now that we, and uh, aired on August 13th, 2006. And it was his first episode for the season. Yes. Uh, that he wrote the first one uh that he wrote that that's why we get a little bit into some continuity problems because we have seen kim earlier but uh you know in this episode this you know she it has never met hank and dean so just things are a little bit out of order that's fine though yeah um, who, who cares nerds <laughs> um yeah. and uh uh the, like this is one of those ones where like jackson public says you know when he reads a doc hammer episode he's like i'm jealous because this is really funny, but you did that without having anything anything happen. Whereas public mm-hmm. is very self conscious about the fact that he makes these very intricate, plotted genre kind of things. It's really interesting that, that this happens. Uh, you know, the twenty years to midnight is between this and Escape to the House of Mummies Part Two. Yeah, because it's it's really like maximum hammer, maximum public, maximum hammer. <laughs> you know. Uh, in terms of that, that thing, oh, we, we mentioned how fans got really fixated on Kim. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of that is because they leave it a very explicit hook, yes, for her to come back mm-hmm. uh, in this. But uh, people really responded to the design more than anything, and they had no intent to bring her back. And eventually, uh, did their best to write her out of the show without killing her mm-hmm. um, by making her become a, a born again Christian and do drug rehab in Florida. Yeah. Uh, but fans still ask them about this right. a lot, apparently. Yeah. So. so they never want to say, oh, we'll never do it. But it's kind of clear that they don't have any idea for it. And they, you know, kind of like when the network says, hey, don't use Pete and Billy. And they decide, well, we're going to do maximum Pete and Billy. When, people, when fans say, oh, I want to see X, Y, or Z, I could see them being like, well, no, you'll never get it. Uh, yeah. That kind of stuff. <laughs> well, it's it's nice that she's just spending her time in Florida 
probably <laughs> post it posting as Jolly Rancher in ninety six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There'll always be a Jolly Rancher is more of a title than a, a person. It's like James yeah. Bond. <laughs> yeah, dread dread um, pirate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um the uh it's also it's really interesting uh in the book reading about this because they mention um that people probably latched on to Kim because uh the show is kind of a sausage party like there aren't a lot of female characters and uh you know that's something that in discussions in the slack and stuff people have brought up mm-hmm. in relation to the show um that's really obviously true i'm kind of surprised that they're as self-aware about it yeah as they are you know they're just like yeah we just we're not good with it mm-hmm. you know there's a lot there's feminine energy on the show but not a lot of ladies yeah um you know and it's like yeah that, that's true you're not necessarily that copying to it makes it an excuse, you know, you can make arguments about the show in terms of representation and stuff, but uh, they are aware of it for what that's worth. It's it's something that I could see being a bigger deal if it was at its height of popularity, like ten years later. Oh yeah, 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 very product of its time. Yep, in that respect, uh, and, and you know, yeah, in many part. respects, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So we start off with our cold open, with every all the kids getting ready for their date. Uh, you, know, you mentioned uh dean has shaved his entire face um which very funny yeah. puts aftershave into his dick uh sprays a blast of axe directly up his urethra <laughs> stop stop making out. it stop making it more detailed no well i mean it's you deleted scenes dude okay um, <laughs> yeah no, I'm, I'm not sure. uh, <laughs> it's all animatic <laughs> i'm sounding himself with a caliper uh, jesus dude uh, <laughs> uh, and, and hey hank being told oh put on your best outfit uh he decides i'm gonna dress up like batman because it's my best costume mm-hmm. i love it i love uh dr venture walking in on dean doing that and dr venture naming his razor like that's my <laughs> daisy that's a very well observed old detail <laughs> Um, and and once again, that's the. I mean, wh- whose first shave wasn't with probably a pink razor that's not yours? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I have very distinct memories of not knowing how an electric shaver worked, and using the electric shaver uh, that was at one of your friends' house, his dad's electric shaver. Uh huh. Um, and he, the, his dad, had obviously not used it in like like years. It felt like it was all rusty and like oh, fucking no. gnarly. And oh. I thought you just like just ran that across your skin and it just made take the hair off uh-huh. uh, when in fact it's like pulling out every individual <laughs> hair with a dull rusty blade <laughs> um so i just like and it was also i don't i know you know when you're a kid you do things you have no idea you know what you're thinking like at 16 i'm like hey guys i'm just gonna do a quick shave uh <laughs> you know, then we can go back to play mario kart or whatever hey guys this and, device uh, is right in front of me i'm just gonna use it <laughs> yeah i've never seen one of these in, in person I, you know nobody who was a father figure in my life had one of these. Uh, and i just was very curious about it like yeah. so definitely shaving with other people's razors is yeah very relatable and <laughs> and after that i mean when you start patting on the the Jovan musk i mean <laughs> I mean, yeah. it can't get any worse. Yeah. Like, kids learn that that hurts well, well before they actually do it. Like mm-hmm. Home Alone taught an entire generation of kids, like that shit stings. Yeah, you know. And as a uh, as a grown man, I have never used aftershave. <laughs> I just well, I, I, I don't tra- yeah. I don't traffic in colognes and stuff. It's just such a weird, antiquated uh, uh, kind of kind of detail. Well, aftershave is also a, as an astringent. You know, okay it, it's meant to like kind of close up your pores and gotcha uh, also i don't and, shave and, you know, I, well that, that's, but the, <laughs> that's the other thing yeah, you, you could still sea breeze that hairline with a cotton ball if you wanted no yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a toner yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man um, um, yeah. I, I like how Brock, uh, convinces Hank to change into normal clothes by saying, if you don't do this in three minutes, then Dean's going to get to drive my charger. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, weaponizing his bond with, with Hank mm-hmm. and kind of early, early signs of it. Uh, Orpheus giving the talk, uh, to Triana, uh, here when a woman enters Estrus. Yeah. There are certain things, uh, <laughs> you know, um, uh, pretty, you know, and she's not taking it seriously. She's just like, you know, free dinner. Right. Like, right. Uh, you know, this is the most important day in Dean's life. Mm-hmm. And Orpheus is scared shitless. And Triana is not too concerned. 
uh, with us. <laughs> I got to say, Triana's really taking one for the team, going out with the Venture Boys so that her dad can get a little break on that rent. It's kind yeah. of fucked up that Dr. O agreed to that or yeah. put her in that position. <laughs> I can imagine her being like, like, Triana is, is very sympathetic yeah. to Dean. You know, like, Triana's not an idiot. She knows that he has a crush on her, mm-hmm. and she knows that he's abused and has this shitty life. Right. You know, like in Assassin Annie and stuff. She's like, how embarrassing is this? Like, she she relates to Dean as a human. Mm-hmm. You know, so I could see her doing it just because it's like, yeah, it's no big deal. It's a date, and, you know, why not? Yeah. Like, I'll go with my friend. It it also shows us how committed Dr. Venture is to having his night by himself to watch his movie. <laughs> God, I, I love that. I love that, that detail bit. so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really good. I mean, he's a he's a cheapskate too, so you know. Uh huh. Yeah. He <laughs> seems really cable. invested. Yeah. <laughs> a really, really good little thread, like a little subplot for Doc. He gets his arm cut off, like you know, well, his, yeah. his main plot for Doc as well. A lot happens in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> it escalates pretty quickly for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought the, it was uh, nice that he ends up solo a mano. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So solo a manos, yeah. like so solo a manos. Um, oh man. Uh, we we we're getting more insight into Phantom Limb and Doctor Girlfriend's dissatisfaction with his button-down villain lifestyle, right? Uh, as he's trying to sell a stolen Rembrandt, <laughs> only wants the Mona Lisa. <laughs> it's uh, not a better painting; it is just more famous. <laughs> yeah, do you know how big it is? I, I love that detail too. Like I saw the Mona Lisa, I went to that New York Museum, mm-hmm. and it is like the size of like a trapper keeper. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's fucking tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like when when Lim goes to demonstrate what size it is, he does it with his invisible arms. <laughs> so I like that a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> So it doesn't go through. Apparently, so I mean, you know, Doc Hammer is a painter. The the Rembrandts and stuff that he has here, like these are actually famous stolen Rembrandt paintings that were taken yes. from a museum in like 1986. So this is researched. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the in the canon, mm-hmm. uh, the you know Phantom Limb stole them. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and Doctor Girlfriend mm-hmm. thinks that this is unbearably lame. You know. <laughs> like yeah. oh you're just uh you're just an accountant more than anything uh but uh it, yeah man I, I love the delivery uh the james urbaniak does on phantom Lum where he's like do you you want the old stuff you know like that <laughs> kind of like kind of deranged mm-hmm. uh you know you you want me to be a fucking monster like i'll kill this guy yeah uh you know and accidentally does so <laughs> kills him while trying to choke him out and gets concerned about the uh about the stain uh tells her go get some seltzer water yeah. this is also where he talks about the uh the car the with the the ghost on the hood <laughs> it, it's nice the way they shove all these together because it is like the different i guess all negative phases of a relationship you know we've got mm-hmm. like dean with like the the early stages you know he's got the crush like <laughs> and then we've got like that disillusioned stagnant like we're in the relationship and we hate each other and then we've got that bitter ex thing you know mm-hmm. once we yeah. get the monarch of the scene it's like a real maiden mother crown yeah and you have <laughs> hank over here being the most well well adjusted out of all of them yeah <laughs> the, the uh it's really weird that in the show the only healthy relationship that ever gets modeled is eventually the monarch and doctor girlfriend yeah you know like they go through a lot of really realistic uh, kind of problems but when they're at their you know healthiest that is the healthy romantic relationship that the show <laughs> you know embodies it just does not happen in yeah. this world you know i guess i guess jj and uh, uh sally impossible but right um you know there, there's <laughs> stuff there yeah <laughs> um the uh the monarch is doing this he's doing a double date to get some some guild paperwork signed to right. get back into the guild um, and, uh, as he's trying to do this, this arrangement, uh, he's telling the, the henchman to get his, uh, Monarch mobile as they're beatboxing. <laughs> um, and, uh, they have, this is the first appearance of the, uh, powder blue Nissan stanza. Mentioned. The mostly powder blue Nissan stanza. The Nissan stanza. <laughs> I love the Nissan stanza. <laughs> You're just going to ride this very normal car, this boxy oh god uh this boxy car as they uh as they roll up with uh the mixtape uh chilling with my peeps <laughs> and my that? main man the monarch <laughs> <laughs> yeah really really good uh 
but we alluded, we had alluded to what uh what rusty's plans were for the night uh and uh that this isn't this is great because you could just see him looking through the tv guide he wants to be alone so he can watch uh what he believes is a porno starring dolly parton the best little whorehouse in texas <laughs> this is very quaint yep uh when it comes to uh pornography mm-hmm. like dr venture wanting the house to himself to masturbate <laughs> uh, that, that's a lot you yeah. know, because you got this whole compound. <laughs> uh, and then just like really, really wanting to see Dolly Parton's tits is like mm. uh, somebody who has some kind of arrested development. It's their, you know, idea. Yes. Of like the, the creme de la tits, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the, the absolute, like the top of the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, because like as a kid, like, you know, I knew about Dolly Parton because of songs. Right. And then I also knew she had a gigantic rack because of rack. And then as you know, adult, you realize like, oh yeah, like sexuality is a little bit more complicated than that. But I like mm-hmm. this as it shows Doc as being like really, really inexperienced mm-hmm. in this stuff. Like, and we, we learned that throughout the show. He talks about how like he didn't get, you know, didn't lose his virginity until college. Um, you know, he's had just a couple of romantic partners and the way he acts with, a uh, uh, I can't remember the, the pseudonym she uses, but Dr. Girlfriend, when she mm-hmm. turns him into Charlene, a, a caterpillar. Yeah. Charlene, like he is also not that much further along than Hank and Dean. Right. In the stuff. Yeah. But just the, the, the absolute confidence that he has, and, you know, and the fact that he overrides Brock, Brock's like, Hey, I think you're going to be disappointed by this. Like, not, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just that he has to be so incredibly cocky about it. Like I'm going to, this is going to be a magic evening and you're not going to ruin it with your reality. Brock. <laughs> It's also very weird to plan a magic evening for yourself to jerk off to to a porno. <laughs> just like and tell your friends about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, buddy, yeah. I got to, you know, put on, I'm going to put on candles and, and jerk off just so you know. Oh, oh, you don't want to join me? That's okay. Like, what the fuck? It's, it's a very weird move. <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining him getting increasingly frustrated. I mean, it's a line from later, but he says, well, she can't keep singing forever. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed when um, he said that this was the worst porno he had ever seen. I'm like, isn't every mainstream movie the worst porno ever? You know? Yeah. Like, Tenet was fucking undergoffable. <laughs> like, it was just confusing. And long. The Irishman. Total sausage fest. Yes. Took Steel all day. Magnolias, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I've ever seen. <laughs> like, I was hoping Magnolia's like, you know, Georgia O'Keefe painting Magnolias, yeah. but in fact it was just about older ladies yeah. coming to terms with things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and, and Dolly still didn't take her top off. Disappointing. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Damn you. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. So, uh, but Brock's got to go drive the boys and we get this, uh, fun cuts, uh, you know, the uh, cut scene split screen uh, mm-hmm. of all of the, uh, of all of the cars headed to the same, uh, to the same place. We have, uh, Kim and Triana talking about the boys. Uh, Kim mm-hmm. is fully done up in her cyber goth kind of thing with the, with the goggles and the hair extensions. <laughs> I, I really like the uh, the line. Uh, Dean is kind of cute. He dresses like Buddy Holly. Like, that's pretty cool. I don't think he does that on purpose, though. I think that, that's, a, that's a really good line. Yeah. It's a brutal burn. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the monarch talking about his date, you know, his jealousy against Dr. Girlfriend, uh, who he met on the live journal, Jolly Rancher 82. This is such a um, 2006 thing incredible yeah she she thinks i'm at test sex yep uh the very very mid-2000s energy to this whole thing <laughs> i was uh, did you have a did you have a a, a live journal either of you i did not hmm. i i did but i didn't really keep it i gotcha. kept like three or four entries and then and then stopped and that was it, it yeah mildly after my time yeah yeah it was just rants about gateway computers and um, <laughs> stuff like that. Dudes who were getting Dells. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was mostly about commercials. It was Gary's commercial review. Yeah. 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 I hate those guys in the clean suits that are trying to sell me microchips. <laughs> <laughs> these blue, these, I don't buy them. These very blue men. Oh, so you're you're blue and I'm supposed to, well, that's why I'm supposed to buy a Pentium? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, um... I love uh, 
Brock in this episode, you know, eventually turns into a kill guy. Like it's uh-huh. great, but him doing this advice is very, you know, confident. Brock uh, is really good. You know, it's like don't do any of that dorky stuff. You know, pull out a chair or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, throwing his corsage out the window. Right. It's uh, good advice. You know, this isn't prom. <laughs> you know, and he, here's a wallet that doesn't have a cartoon B on it. <laughs> a rare reference to Busy B mm-hmm. after the first season. Yeah. Um, and then his advice for, for, for Hank, you know, as opposed to like, Hey, don't pretend to be more grown up and gentlemanly than you are is just literally like, uh, so d- don't call her your mystery date. And also don't do, yeah. don't do that. Do you like seafood joke? <laughs> like, just don't yeah. be a literal child. Very, very Hank. <laughs> yeah. Um, they get to the restaurant, they're waiting uh, for their dates. Hank is trying to uh, get Dean to pump him up. Mm -hmm. You know, by talking about stunts that he does. Um, And uh, he eventually, when he sees her, he loses his mind. He's like, oh, maybe she's a Medusa. Yeah. (laughs) Um, You know, uh, and thinks she's a supervillain because she's dressed up like a techno, you know, uh, like she's in a techno. Yeah. uh, There. Um, And he regrets not having worn his Batman costume. Of course. Which I like. (laughs) uh but uh jolly rancher 82 is here and she's very disappointed uh because you know she thought that he was gonna be like a regular person who was just into like cosplay or whatever um the the fact that the fact that monarch was on live journal that feels very you know it, it 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 tracks because we know that he wrote bad poetry about butterflies in college so I I sure. kind of know exactly what his blog would have been like. <laughs> yeah. It's his I, prison live journal, though. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm kind of surprised they didn't make one of those. Oh, yeah. Because you know, they, they were doing a lot of, like, online stunt kind of transmedia stuff mm-hmm. there. Um, I love the uh, this whole bit where, like, him, him not getting, you know, that she's <laughs> from the real world. Mm-hmm. Like, she's like, you know, you know, that's not really my real name. And he's like, well, how was I supposed to know? I used my real name. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, that's really good. Uh, and then I also, the, the uh, cos- cosplay, is like, I'm into costume business, not costume play, mm-hmm. uh, is extremely good. And I felt bad for Jolly Rancher 82. Yeah. Uh, you know, being used as a prop in somebody else's jealousy game is never good. She- yeah, she walked into something there. <laughs> there was a vibe. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a vibe. Yeah, there's an entire vibe. He, and, and but th- th- that's not the like that's not the straw that brings the camels back for her though. Like she's around for a little bit more even though he like she like she's aware of what he's doing, you know, cuz he talks about like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, just as Dr. Girlfriend walks in, she says, "Oh, she's beautiful." Uh and again, this new wave 80s music kind of pull. Monarch says, "Oh, back when we met, she looked like Saf- Saffron from Republica." Yes. Uh, <laughs> the people who did Ready to Go, mm-hmm. if you remember that song. Uh, she had little red streaks in her hair. I looked up Saf- I looked at that video Yeah. Uh, in preparation. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. That was to sex at this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, uh, me just nodding appreciably. Hmm, to sex. Good pull, Doc. Yeah. The, the, um, and they, she, she asked about Phantom Limb, and this is where everyone conjectures on Phantom Limb's uh, background. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, you know, undi- like the, his account is probably the closest to true, yes. um, here, uh, you know, he was a scrawny was in college. He had a 12 year old roommate and this is Billy quiz boy, make a machine to accelerate his muscle growth. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen these muscle growth accelerators before. Yes. Um, so that's another thing that kind of lends credence to this, even mm-hmm. though we'll later get stuff that uh, doesn't directly tie into it with Billy. Yeah. Uh, 21, uh, is sharing with 24, his, his idea of the backstory that Lim used to be a good guy. I love that Lim is wearing like an old timey, like twenties wrestler outfit as he stands well, he in looks, the, <laughs> he, he, lo- he looks like, um, his like inspiration. Like he looks like a, like a Phantomos or like a, yeah. um, like the, the phantom, mm-hmm. you know, it's like not a wrestler outfit. It's like an old superhero pulp hero. Yeah. Kind of look, but he used to be a good guy and uh, Billy made him a time machine, but has sent his limbs 40 years into the future. Uh, and of course, like that's just the background detail. The real thing is like, Oh yeah, that Billy guy, he made all of his money on card sharks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked the way that the henchmen were eating. Like nobody else got to eat except for the henchmen. Oh, uh-huh, they sat at the bar. <laughs> could serve quicker at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you do get served quicker at the bar. I wonder if it had full there? menu. I mean, it looked like it would look pretty good. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a 45-minute wait, but we can seat you at the bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure, why not? Yeah. We got a movie to, we got a movie to hit. Come on. <laughs> um, I love the idea of his limbs being sent into the future and still being active. That, like, two-second flash 
flash forward of them like doing stuff. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, you know, Hank says, "Oh yeah, that guy hates my dad. Not professionally, but he hates my dad because he's <laughs> again into the world, loves the world. Yes, um, is trying to brag about that, uh, and just makes up Hank nonsense." Yeah. Um, of him banishing his his arms where magicians send things when they disappear, <laughs> uh, which is the moon. Yeah, of course he was doing a magician show for the uh, for the queen for the queen of England. <laughs> just up there with a bunch of doves, some cards, and some milk. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that little guy that operated on your balls, Dean. I think he was up there. And that's not a cool cool thing to say in a date. Nope. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, oh so. God. And he, I, man, I love the emasculation too, where Dean's like, don't you have to use the bathroom? And Hank goes, well, looks like little Dino needs to escort to the bathroom. <laughs> it's so fucking brutal. Yeah. <laughs> so like, brutal. He's doing it unten- unintentionally too. There's no malice. <laughs> no no malice The lady will it. have something, whatever disco fries is. You know, it's, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Poor sweet baby Dean. His corsage got thrown out a car window. <laughs> he's having a rough one. Yeah, his, his brother disclosed his ball surgery. Hank, Hank had the, the ball surgery. Yep. Who operated on that if it wasn't really? <laughs> they give Pete a shot? I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's like, he fell off. I'll give that a try. <laughs> um, uh, so the, the we kind of find out the pretext here. Like, Phantom Limb wasn't going to agree to go to a, just a, a double date on normally. It's so he could uh, reintegrate the monarch into the guild mm-hmm. um, and renew his guild contracts and insurance. Uh, again, kind of showing him as a paper pusher more than, yeah. you know, not into the uh, thrilling part of villainy. No, no. He's more interested in the cutouts uh, to where they could deny coverage if a lair is in a volcano or a bog. Uh, yeah. It's kind of the happiest that he gets in the episode outside of when he's describing his, uh, his wine shandies that, <laughs> that yeah. he's serving. Tinto de Verano. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good. Um, Monarch calls him out on this, uh, and he, you know, he in a, a display of machismo, he's like, you know, I could have the Venture family killed tonight, mm-hmm. um, and he calls in for it. Yeah, uh, you know, he, he calls into Watch and Ward for in a robot uh, code code uh, sign Victor Echo November. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the episode gets its title from. Yeah. It says, I need an immediate blackout for and a robot, referring to Brock, Rusty, the two boys, and Helper. Uh, I hate that in the note I call it, I call them Watch and Warrants, which I think and, and maybe I was thinking of Carmen San Diego at the time. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> we have to get the Watch and the Warrant. Why are you not trouble. thinking of Carmen San Diego? <laughs> yeah, true. You're not thinking of the chief. <laughs> a very <laughs> powerful person, the chief. This is like a good woman. Open a lot of doors for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of stay on her good side yeah uh no but uh they they dispatch the blackout team there's a little bit of again very 2006 uh kind of stuff where one of them is uh trying to pick music on the ipod and because it's not a cd just you know skipping songs like oh i'm just gonna keep on skipping until i get something that i like yeah um you know brock immediately knows what's going on Screams for Rusty to get into the panic room. Yeah. Uh, and this is where he's like, I'm so, I'm this close to seeing Dolly's good. They can't keep singing forever. <laughs> um, and again, like, you know, the uh, Brock is just like, this isn't really, uh, you know, this is, this is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this is, you know, this happens all the time. Brock's just going to kill some dudes. Mm-hmm. This is business as usual until Brock burst in naked, covered in blood <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> with his knife. Uh, you know, move among them like an animal, feel the kill. <laughs> so feel his, his fear. And I love their, I love this like line delivery, like heartbroken rusty is one of my favorite, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like ways that James Urbaniak, uh, vocally emotes. Mm-hmm. And I love this, like this one's different, isn't it? Brock. Yeah. And Brock's just being like, yeah, like, no, you should actually be scared about this. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll get to the safe room just after I finish peeing on myself. <laughs> I was Weird, terrified. Weirdly, not the only using the bathroom in your pants joke in this episode. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, it's a it's a theme. Yeah. It's an important theme. <laughs> Resonant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Brock activates Helper's weapons. Not that it does him any good. Uh, and Doctor Girlfriend back at the restaurant is disgusted because everything turns into uh, the Ventures being attacked right like yeah jesus like i was we were at the mall and it turned into that now we're here and it turns into that she's just over it so like dr dr girlfriend wants a specific thing yeah 
you know, like the phantom limb is too bureaucratic. The monarch is too obsessed. Like she mm -hmm. wants the supervillain shit. She is a supervillain in, in and of her own right. Mm -hmm. And her arc, you know, of her trying, you know, kind of going back to that and trying things yeah. uh, will kind of continue throughout the show. But neither of these two men are hitting the balance right now. Right. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's, it's a very like interesting situation to be on a date with your current, you know, love who is fulfilling one need, but not another. Mm -hmm. And then your ex who is fulfilling the other, but not the one. Yeah. You know, I tell you, Watching your your boyfriend sell insurance to your ex. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what's obviously like a Marie Calendars is probably not like a <laughs> you know. Oh gosh, God, I just I, I love what a dweeb Lim is. Uh, so, uh, but Lim, you know, she she has stormed off, and he, you know, he asked Monarch, you know, do you love do you love her? And Monarch's like, oh, this is too high school for me. Monarch, the person who brought a, a, a date here to make Dr. Girlfriend jealous, says that Lim is too is is, is too high school for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they showed dudes. up in a stanza with a mixtape. It's too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, And brought his henchmen to right. go oversee. Like, ne neither of these men are worth Dr. Girlfriend. No. Uh, at this point, even remotely. We get the we get a scene. This is I love this episode. I find this scene a little bit long. This little yeah. bit here with the uh, the kidney. It goes on. Yeah, I feel like this goes on a little bit. Like, and I feel like they've done a they or not that they have done, but they will eventually do a version of this. Like when Brock grabs the ball sack and notices a lump <laughs> uh, on a character later. Yeah, you know, in the series, it feels like a different version of the scene. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Um, you know, where Brock stabs one of the guys, gets some intelligence, you know, and he's like, you know, you could live uh, here. And the guy is just being very dramatic in a way that felt, I think, you know, I, this is probably obnoxious to a lot of people because I'm taking something seriously that's just a comedy, but mm -hmm. it felt really jokey, jokey and not in a way that felt lived in with the world. Right. Like him asking to be sung a Technotronic song is a, a good random band to pull, but also it doesn't seem like, like a guild shadow man, mm. you know, would do that. It, 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 the, the stranger uh phantom yeah, stranger. limb had the shadow man gary oh, right. yeah well, i don't think a stranger <laughs> would do that no you know no. just weird i i will say that i just casually read some article earlier this week about you know the rise of death doulas that you know escort you into the you know support you through that process and i didn't think anything of it until i heard this technotronic line <laughs> and in the top of my list you, you know i'm like I'm, I'm there with my death doula i'm about to move on Move death this. doula has you know? very powerful energy yeah. oh yeah death doula yeah, and it, it, it's a tarot one of, card yeah <laughs> absolutely and it's also the kind of like powerful concept that you can ruin really easily like uh contrast your feelings as i say the following things death doula quentin tarantino presents death doula no no <laughs> Don't those feel just like entirely like night and day? Like one of them is great and one of them is just like, oh, fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> I wouldn't even buy the ticket, let alone walk out of it. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's just like, oh. <laughs> like they're just very different energies. Yeah. I just, it, it it is funny that Brock like sighs and then acquiesces to it. Like, you know, it, it cuts away before yeah. he gets one of the lines through, but like, this is I, our, I, it's an episode that's already full of this stuff. Like they mentioned, they mentioned Yaz later. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't, yeah. They, they, they didn't need it. Yeah. I do like, I do like Brock being like, uh, I'm pretty sure he missed. You might bleed out in four hours or, <laughs> you know, like that kind of like you're overreacting, but yeah. I kind of liked Yeah. But. Um, we find out that the, you know, the, the strangers, uh, have been, uh, done, you know, have killed, uh, helper incapacitated him. And we see Rusty's arm, uh, with his wristwatch. And then we see it's disconnected. It's been torn off. Yes. Uh, which is pretty intense for mm -hmm. the Venture brothers. It's not the first mm -hmm. time Rusty's arm has been yanked off. I don't think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Might be, a might be a different one. <laughs> so back at the restaurant everybody has gone to the bathroom so you know monarch stormed off uh phantom limb walks in and he is surprised to see the boys that are here so two of the four that were supposed to be uh gotten with the blackout are in the room uh-oh so he ducks into a stall um and then this goes into it's a long bit but it works uh yeah, with... this, this works for me 100 as, <laughs> as a 
dude who, you know, has spent a lot of his life like strategizing how not to get urine inside my pants after urinating. Right, right. That's why you went this into that room. Relatable content. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely relatable content. Mm-hmm. Um, about dabbing, like you know, uh, Hank gets a bunch of piss uh, on the front of his pants. Yep. Um, you know, one of the weird things about pissing mm-hmm. is that sometimes you don't get all of it. Right. You know, sometimes there's, there's some left over and there are different methods. Uh, shaking is the traditional way. And that's what he says. He's like, I shook it so hard. It's going to fall off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Dean, wise Dean is like, you didn't dab? Dab. <laughs> I dab. You should dab. Uh, and dabbing is the way. Uh, Dean is correct. Yeah. But then you gotta you, know? you gotta you gotta dip into a stall to grab the grab the toilet paper and then come back out to the. Well, if you're in if you're in public, like I just I try to grab a napkin. Okay. Then, okay. But if I'm in somebody's house or my house, mm. always dab. Okay. Yeah. I, I say, a napkin and a handful of Olive Garden mints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, to like bribe anybody me, who happens to one see for you. the dab. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> like I just I would say ninety five percent of my pisses have been uh, post dabbed. Okay. And I never looked back. It, you mm-hmm. don't get piss on your pants. Yeah. And call me crazy. I don't like having piss on my pants, and I don't like shaking my ding dong to try to get the piss out. It I doesn't th- feel right. I think you're virtue signaling here. <laughs> no, I don't think that. Yeah. This is probably a really minor little detail, but when they were showing the animations of them urinating, Hank didn't seem to have any splashes, and <laughs> it was just splashing all by his feet. So I would posit that Dean's shoes are covered in urine. The, the, oh yeah, yeah. If it's, getting... it's just not as it, it doesn't draw the eye like yeah. <laughs> Hank's crotch. <laughs> Right. It's a hidden. It's a hidden urine. Yeah, yeah. fool's uh, urine. Few, few, yeah. Few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in the fool's urine community, we call that real urine. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh God! Getting ready for the tickle harvest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, but it, if you're listening to this dab. Yeah, give it a shot anyway. See if you can work it yeah. into your workflow. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> but, you know, uh, if you're at home, it just takes one square. <laughs> yeah. It's like one square. It's a really efficient use of toilet paper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, something that I also love and something that's happened here is that Hank gets really frustrated with Dean saying dab over and over again. Yeah. The word dab has yeah. lost all meaning at this point. Yeah. Say scuba. <laughs> um the uh, Brock naked trying to save the boys yelling at Rusty and Rusty uh, is like, Brock, you know, you have to come back here. You're uh-huh. fired. Uh, he's used a Christmas tree stand to close his stump using a <laughs> panic room, which they've converted to storage. Yeah. The only thing that saved uh, me is our lack of storage. I love the yes. zoom out reveal that he has clamped the Christmas tree stand. <laughs> it's really good. Um, you know, here's where Hank decides to figure out a way. And this is also very relatable as somebody who has either spilled water on uh-huh. his pants or uh, didn't dab in my right. pre-dab days. <laughs> got a little urine on my pants and got embarrassed uh-huh. uh, trying to dry it on the hand dryer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, very relatable. Uh, but of course, Hank being Hank uh, <laughs> is all in. Yeah, this is my favorite line in the in the episode when he's when he's trying to tell Dean, "Oh, this feels great. It feels like somebody's. It feels like somebody with a fever is yelling at my pants." As he is really cling, clinging to the wall, holding himself in front of the in front of the spout. Yeah, so good, so good. Um, the uh, you know Brock calls, say like, "Hey, date's off. You know, where are you? Are you safe?" And he's on his way. The monarch walks in. So we have all of these, you know, interested parties. <laughs> yep. All in the bathroom. Well, and then, no, then the henchmen come in right after. Uh, yeah, yeah, not yet. Uh, one of them's like, I, I got to go to the bathroom. He's like, don't go. I don't want to be eating by myself. I'm going to look like a loser. He's like, well, you spent like an hour eating with somebody dressed exactly like you. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so he's like, well, at least I look like a popular idiot. Very cute. It's a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then they, you know, they get in the, they, they get in the stall, um, you know, uh, trying to hide from the boys. And of course, they've got to throw in a little pun here and a Star Wars joke. Uh, 21 says, dude, get out of here. I've got to take account Dooku. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep pretty pretty if i was in that situation i would expect my friend to hold it yeah this is uh, when when there are two of us in here this isn't a bathroom anymore this isn't a bathroom no, this stall is, 
The, the yeah, purpose changed. Meetings. The context changed. Yeah. I'm so, I'm this sorry is... about all the bathroom content we have on here, Don. <laughs> we have on here, Autumn. <laughs> like... Oh, well, I, I guess I'm just curious how it usually works when you guys are at like a games expo or something, and you're hiding in a restroom. I mean, well, we we plan the uh, the panel go, we're gonna right? do. Yeah, we don't we don't use the bathroom. We just talk about jokes we're gonna make. Yeah, yeah. in the panel, we practice our small talk. Like I hand Cole a button, mm-hmm. and he sit, pretends to be a fan, and then he hands me a button, and I pretend to be a fan. Yep. We just kind of go back and forth, and we, yeah. we do it to the beautiful sounds of a convention bathroom going on around us. <laughs> I find it soothing. Yeah. Um, uh, I find it terrifying. Yeah, it's like yeah. jazz. Yeah. It's hey, it's very unpredictable, like the best jazz. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, but the uh, you know so so everybody's in the bathroom. They they did a lot to get to these part. Um, you know Hank's pa- can't uh, pants catch fire. Dean is beating his crotch out, uh, and then this is where Hank gets, gets some water and he does the line that mm, that's how we got into this mess. <laughs> uh, just incredible confidence, yeah. Dean. <laughs> Dean. Uh, and and who is it? Uh, who is it that says? I think it's Monarch. He says, "I can't believe it's this. It's it's hard to kill these two you know yeah. just is seeing the display that is here ahead of them uh so at this point Lim cancels the blackout team because they've got uh they've got two of them here doesn't make any sense here so at least rusty is safe as he bleeds out well he, uh, he doesn't cancel the blackout team i think that his implication was that because he calls it off later oh right um, no he says like hey uh, d- don't look for the two we have two of them over here yeah yeah I got the kids. Daddy's going to put them to bed or whatever his. Yeah. Yeah. His you know. little euphemism. Yeah. Oh, the daddy's lap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, got the, I've, I've got the boys on my, on, the boys are on daddy's lap. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, no, that's, that's not like shorthand. They agreed on. That's just Lim being a dweeb again. Yeah. Super dweeb. Um, the scene that made a bunch of fans really love Kim. <laughs> uh, where they run in Kim and Triana run into Dr. Girlfriend in the bathroom. Um, and they like, th- they talk shop. Yeah. You know, Dr. Girlfriend thinks Kim is in the guild. He talks about her lipstick uh, her pink poodle lipstick, which is a real uh, MAC lipstick product. Okay. Uh, you know, that exists. Um, and this is where Kim is just like, Oh my God, like she's so fucking awesome. I'm going to become a super villain. She yeah. says, she says it later, but this is where she, it, the, she begins yeah. the yeah. journey. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is this is Dr. Girlfriend saying, like, I'm so tired of working for these people. Like, you know, just if you want to team up, you know, let's go start something new, you know, and well, hands her a card. Yes. She's like, I'm so tired of being with men. Right. If you ever want to get something going, you know, like it, it's it's big, uh, like by beating energy. Yeah. Um, Wait till she meets the Moppets. <laughs> the Moppets might be yeah. a deal breaker. Yeah, Moppets are a deal breaker. Uh, when, when people when people didn't like uh, Pete and Billy, I'm like, go to hell. But mm-hmm. when, when the develop when the network was like, use less of the Moppets, I'm kind of okay with it. Yeah, I'm good with the, that. The, I find the Moppets a little bit difficult. Um, I, I love a lot of plots with the Moppets. I just find their voices mm-hmm. tricky uh, and unpleasant. Yes. Um, Brock crashes into the window. Uh, you know, Dean looks at him and goes naked. Naked. <laughs> uh, he tells them to get out of there as he kind of goes from stall to stall. Yeah. Uh, interrogating. <laughs> he, and he knows, okay, these henchmen, uh, probably not a problem. So we're going to move on to the next one. Here's the monarch. No, this couldn't be him because he's not in with the guild. Then he gets to limb. Yes. Yeah. A cute little beat where uh, he helps uh, 21 poop. Uh huh. Well. Little audio, a little fully joke. <laughs> You know, oh, fully splash. <laughs> um, Brock and Lim, you know, get through, you know, he's, Lim is saying like, I'm going to do this. And Brock is saying like, if you ever come for them again, I'm going to kill you. Like, don't come for my family. Mm-hmm. Um, and threatens to cut off his head. Like basically just, uh, you know, power plays him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, this is like the second time they've kind of like, I feel like this is the end of their little bonding moment. Yeah. Cause they have like, to get, they have to reach them. an ultimatum. Yeah. Yeah. Like they've had a couple of times where they've not like quite teamed up, but kind of had, you know, stuff in common. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of when Brock and the Phantom Lim break up. Yeah. You know, and Lim again, because he's a dweeb, he says, oh, it's so much easier to kill than to love. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the, and- the things we do when we're afraid of losing our women. <laughs> you know, we're not so different. You and I, and of course, Brock is somebody who would have gotten that speech a lot. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> a because it's a cliche, but also, you know, this is not the first time that we've grappled with the fact that Brock is a murder machine. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro- Brock, you know, the only thing changing Brock, you know, making Brock not a supervillain is just like mild amounts of context. Yes. Um, they do a shake, you know, uh, the, you know, Brock suspects that Vandalum is going to shock him. You know, they do a cute, like for a second, I thought you were going to do that thing. And he's like, so did I, <laughs> you know, very cute. Yeah. Agree. Um, Hank and Dean go back to the table. Hank's pants are burnt open. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, uh, from fire. Yeah. We're not even going to try and like explain this away or cover it up. Just here, full, full on burnt pants. <laughs> Yeah, re- resigned. <laughs> um, I mean, definitely yeah. no one's thinking, I bet he peed his pants. You know, right. I mean, it, it, it didn't work. Unless he pissed his fire. <laughs> I think I got into an accident, but he didn't piss his pants. He grew up on a super yeah. science compound, Gary. <laughs> this is a good, a good well, I know. I'm just, I'm thinking that's like a great way to distract. It is. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> but, uh, if but you the... ever piss your pants. <laughs> to, to make that wild that claim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just make a wild claim in case I, I piss my pants. Yeah, I tell you, I'm gonna come up with something very distracting. Improbable number of people, um, I, I guess, soiled themselves. I mean, we got the henchman, mm-hmm. we got mm-hmm. um, Dr. Venture, we got Hank, Dean peed all mm-hmm. over his shoes. Um, did the <laughs> guy that Brock kill uh, wet his pants? I mean, it was implied. Oh, no, he just got the kidney. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure, I'm, I'm well, sure he... there was a relaxation at the moment of death. <laughs> if, if he actually got his kidney, then. That is going to be like a, a dark piss. He's got another one. That's going to be a forbidden piss. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people peeing themselves in this episode. Yeah. This is a real pee pee poo poo episode. That's a, yes. it's a real doc thing. Yeah. You know, the beginning where Triana's like, you said duty. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. Kind of presaging it. Oh, like, yeah. this is a very pee pee poo poo episode. Yeah. You know? Uh, but a good one. I'm not always into pee pee poo poo. Mm-hmm. But this this episode does good stuff with it. The, the <laughs> logistics of urinating, I am always going to be on board with. Yes. Like urinal etiquette, <laughs> shaking it, dab, all that stuff I'm very interested in. <laughs> yep. You know? for, fertile <laughs> ground for conversation. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, universal. surprisingly, this has not been a disastrous date. You know, Triana says, hey, do you want to get some dessert? Um, you know, and Kim says, ooh, I'm going to be a supervillain. Hank says, I'm going to be Batman. Everybody is really happy. The boys do a go team venture. Kim is uh, disgusted by this and says that they're going to be my first arch enemies. Let me get credit. It's yes. a very cute moment. Super mm-hmm. cute. Nothing comes of it. <laughs> um, Post credits, um, they do a fake out that Billy Quizboy gave Rusty a robotic arm. Uh, it turns out he's just calibrating his own arm mm-hmm. uh, for this. And he says, you know, this thing uh, seizes up if I do delicate work. He's like, how'd you get that thing anyway? Good question. No idea. Yep. Um, <laughs> Playing into the uh, the flashbacks, into the mysteries. Yeah, I, yeah. I tell you, Gary, your voices are on point. That was a really incredible <laughs> Billy Quiz Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, it's it's one of the reasons why I'm just holding my breath for for uh, Sergeant Hatred to come in because my Sergeant Hatred is pretty good. Yeah. Despite the fact that everyone hates that character, we got a preview could, of it I, earlier. <laughs> yeah. I could just hear those enlarged ad noids in there, just <laughs> whistling. <Yeah. laughs> it's just a uh, really, it's really good voice. Uh, Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. The uh, doing uh, Venture Brothers voices is fun. It is. Yeah. Um, and that, that's the that's the episode. That's Victor Echo November. Yeah. Do you have any wrap up thoughts on him? I just, you know, you, you, you love to see it work out okay in the end, but not the way that, that you thought. You know, mm-hmm. Dean's date did turn out fine. Mm-hmm everybody's fine at the end. I mean, it was just, I, I love it when they put all the, the toys together and start bashing them against each other, you know, mm-hmm. like having all of these distinct groups all in one place. I mean, it's, it, it's classic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. Like all of these different kind of um, cross purpose motivations. And then they're also mixing uh, really high minded, you know, motivations, like very hyper real, super villainy stuff with things like a kid's first date. Yeah. You know, very low minded stakes. Uh, and I think that's one of the things doc is really good at is like mixing that stuff together. And we saw it in mummies as well, where it was about this absolutely wild adventure that was taking place on one half. And then this like pathetic 
science versus magic gentleman's bet <laughs> happening. Like, you know, he gets a lot of mileage out of contrasting those two things. Yeah. I think the fact that Brock is naked and covered in blood. Um, and even he is in the restaurant and he is in the, you know, context of things, not the most out of place element there. It speaks a lot yeah. to kind of like what they're playing with and the fun of this. Like I said at the back of the beginning, anytime the smaller world of the show collides with the real world that it inhabits. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Really good episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Autumn. Appreciate you. Oh, good to talk well, to I, you. I appreciate you guys. And um, yeah, I just, like I said at the beginning, I'm just so delighted to have gotten to talk about one of my absolute favorite episodes. Nice. Sweet baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet baby. Very, very sweet little Dean. <laughs> do you uh do you have anything that you would like to uh to plug or anything? Dead Blood Club coming back? Uh, you know, that um, that actually would be uh would, would be a you know, we're we're working on a few things, but nothing nothing's nothing's actually realized yet. Jeremy's been practicing his cooking TikToks. Um and <laughs> <laughs> so we're, 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 we're playing around with some stuff like that but um man for once not anything in particular it's been a slow year yeah yeah it, it, i mean boy has it uh, <laughs> absolutely yeah. Yeah. um but you, uh, you've you've guessed it on some stuff throughout kind of the network on some radio free midworlds yep. um you were uh part of the live version of that that we did mm -hmm. um in the summer yeah, yeah, which we're going to have yeah. to work on that again, because we're also in a convention for a year again. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, in DuckFest 2, uh, yeah. people should check out the network and find your uh, passport uh, appearances. Yeah. Always a delight. Yeah, over on Radio so. Fumid World, the show that I assure everybody is coming back. Uh, it's just, you know, hit, hit a weird lull. I got to get my shit together. Uh, but, yeah, Radio, well, Radio you have Fumid to read World. Like, one, one third of a book. book for every episode of that yeah you know i'm not i'm not smart. jealous like i i like i watched 20 minutes of this and then i uh, listened to a commentary and read two pages of a book uh -huh. to prepare like that's nothing <laughs> yeah. yeah so you know? uh, every episode of stephen king is an 800 page investment yeah yeah so but if you want to go and listen listen to that it's a show about the dark tower series of books and uh autumn has been a frequent guest and a delightful guest there. um and until uh, next time go, go team, team venture, venture.